Hi guys, it's Gunter Bit, and welcome back to my legendary playthrough of Skyrim on the Xbox 360. In the last episode, we completed a couple of contracts for the. Whoop! Oh no, <laughs> it's a bird, I thought it was a dragon. <laughs> for the Dark Brotherhood, um, so we've got to go turn that in. Uh, but I was just looking at the map, and um, let's show you the map now. Because uh, we're up here at the moment, <clears throat> and just looking through the missions and stuff that we've got left to do, um, I've come up with a bit of a plan for this episode. So we're currently here at, um, at Hella's Folly, and I thought we might as well make it back around the coastline uh, to check out uh, this place here, Winstad Manor. Now this is the Hearthfire DLC, uh, we did enough missions in Morthal, and while Morthal doesn't have an actual house you can buy, if you have the Hearthfire DLC it'll actually give you the option to buy a plot of land where you can actually build your own house, which is kind of cool. Now, right now, I'm not really going to uh, show you the Hearthfire DLC in this episode, just because uh, my plan is I want to get all three uh, plots of land that you can get, and then I can show you the various, um, all the different rooms that you can build in your houses, uh, via the three houses, if you know what I mean. Uh, because what happens is you get a choice to uh, create wings, and you can kind of create an alchemy wing, or an armory wing, or a library, or a kitchen, that kind of thing. Uh, but the thing is, I think you can only have a maximum of two, um, specialist areas on each house and obviously I want to show you all of them so my general idea is to make three houses with uh, basically all the different extras and then you can work out for yourself which one's the best for now though I've only done the uh, the Morthal one I have to go and do Fulcreath and I'm not sure where the third one is um, I have to check that up online uh, but that's basically the idea but I thought we might as well come around here we can uh, unlock this location and uh, then we can go to Solitude because I'm kind of weighted down at the moment so it'd be good to do a bit of trading. We have a numbers job to do for Delvin as well in Solitude, uh, and that kind of ties in nicely with the Dark Brotherhood quest line because uh, we also have to go and drop off the amulet that we got from Volunrund um, with Delvin. So we might as well kill two birds with one stone, uh, do the mission, and then we can you know pick up another numbers mission with Delvin, give him the amulet so we can continue the the Dark Brotherhood quest line. Um, but then once I've done the, the trading, before we go visit Delvin in Riften, um, I'd also like to unlock this location, Ustengrav, uh, because that's part of the, the main storyline for Skyrim. It's actually uh, a mission we got from the Greybirds ages ago, uh, when we first went up to meet the Greybirds. Uh, they asked us to go and retrieve the Horn of Jürgen Wingcaller, which is in uh, Ustengrav tomb. Now Ustengrav, from what I remember, is full of Draugr, so it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, so for this episode, we're just hopefully going to do the journey, because I, I could just fast travel, but you know, where's the point in that? And, you know, there's quite a lot of things I'd like to discuss with you guys as well on the journey. So, yeah, hopefully um, you'll stick around for this. Uh, it could be fun, you never know what's going to happen, you never know what's going to attack us. <laughs> I just noticed as well there's a cave, so we might as well go and unlock that location too, uh, just because it helps us fast travel there later on. And um, first and foremost, what I'd like to do as well this episode is give out another a shout out to a new sub who's uh, recently come to my channel and uh, now the guy's a Dutch guy by the name of Daniel Commander uh, but we're having a really good chat in the comments section about Skyrim and um, you know because he's played the game quite a lot as well uh, and he's actually got some really great tips um, I mean I found out thanks to him that there's actually a shout called clear skies which means you can actually get rid of the the rain or the mist to make uh, Skyrim look a lot better, which sounds pretty cool. That could be quite useful, especially doing um, a YouTube video. So I'll definitely have to investigate that. Uh, he's also, you know, chatted to me a little bit about the uh, Hearthfire DLC as well, because I've done it. <clears throat> as you know, uh, most people who watch this, I do actually tend to do dry runs. I don't do a, like a complete blind playthrough of Skyrim, uh, just because from my own personal experience, you know, I can't stand watching blind playthroughs where it's people, you know, standing going, uh, "Which way do we go now? Do we go up there?" We go down there, I'm not quite sure. You know, it's kind of, you, you just start sh shouting at the screen, going, you know, turn left, turn right, carry straight on. Um, so that's that location discovered, which is all well and good. There's actually a standing stone over there as well. So I guess we might as well try and get that uncovered as well. Uh, now we are in snow bear territory too, so I think probably the best bet would be, oops, to, to make kinds peace, just in case we get jumped by something because um, the standing stone is just on top of that rock there uh, I can't remember off the top of my head which one it is hello anybody Cut. down down good bear good yogi down. and die okay I said die seriously I said die <laughs> 
dare you disobey me. So, this is like what I was saying about this area. It's kind of good to explore, but at the same time, it's quite, you know, you've got to be careful. Now, if you have that little thing there, I think that's just a guy, um, like a dead guy, so it doesn't actually lead to the standing stone, but we might as well do it, just for the heck. I think he's got some pretty decent loot on him. If I can, there it is. Yeah, there's a flagpole. Dude. A dead dude. And next to the nine book. It's probably a school book, but I've already got the skill. You got in your chest. Uh, full of stamethyst. Thank you. We'll take, actually, a pretty good haul. It's not bad at all. Thank you very nicely, mate. Um, yeah, so, you know, it's a really good. Speaking to that guy, speaking to Daniel through the comment section, it's kind of nice as well um, when you have a YouTube channel to actually get conversations going in the in the comment section. Um, it kind of it's nice, you know, to to get ideas as well, and also you know get feedback on, on what you could do, could be doing better. Because you know I do this as a hobby. I'm not you know I'm not in it for the money or anything like that. Um, and obviously, I do want to improve I'm not perfect um, I make quite a lot of mistakes in this series for example in the early episodes anyone who's, who's been with me right since the beginning um, it's just nice you know to get new ideas of things I could do uh, interesting quests uh, that sometimes play out differently for other people uh, ooh. Man, what is with, with these bears just calm down man it's getting ruining me um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty nice. Um, another thing that I should mention as well is that I'll be going to Spain in a couple of weeks, uh, which means I won't be able to <clears throat> record or upload. Um, I'm also probably going to be a lot less active on, on Twitter and, you know, liking and subscribing other videos. Uh, just because Spanish internet is, let's be honest, crap. <laughs> uh, anyone who knows who's been with this channel from the beginning knows that I actually spent nine years living in Spain. Uh, my girlfriend's Spanish. She's currently studying um, <clears throat> to be a nurse, which an auxiliary nurse, which is nice. So I'm going over to see her and, um, and you know, just to, to, just to get a break from things. So, oh, this is sad. Um, obviously, this guy survived that shipwreck over there. There's not much else here. Oh, hang on. There's a note for Shelley. Uh, Shelley, your ship should have arrived weeks ago and I fear the worst has happened. I've set up camp on this rock as your ship should pass by here and hopefully one of these days we'll be together again. If you're reading this, I'm probably out hunting or bringing in some supplies. I'll be waiting here until I see your face again. Faithfully yours, Trius. Oh man, that's sad. Because it looks like uh, Shelley's ship basically sank. <laughs> over there this is um i think it's called pilgrim's trench it's uh, an underwater place so it's not really much point exploring it right now because uh, i have one underwater breathing potion only and it's not enough to get down to the bottom and then get back up again so we'll leave this for now um and let's get back on track so so yeah i'll be over in spain uh, which means i'll be a bit inactive uh, sorry about that but, you know um once i get back obviously skyrim will continue um, Gears of War will continue. I've completely finished recording that series now, so that'll be going out every day at uh, six. And you know, I hope you guys are enjoying it as well. It's just something that I really wanted to play. Uh, I had a lot of fond memories of Gears of War, the first Gears of War. Uh, the rest, um, I don't know. With each new game, it kind of lost a bit of appeal to me. Uh, but I've prattled on enough, so uh, I've told you about. I'll give a shout out to Daniel. I've told you about Spain. Uh, is there anything else that I can I wanted to mention? I can't remember. So yeah, let's get back to it, I guess. Um, oh, I've been watching quite a lot of um, Elder Scrolls Online uh, playthroughs, and I must admit that I think I may have been too quick to write that game off completely. Uh, I mean, I'm not in a position financially to pay um, eight quid a month just for one game. I just, you know, I can't justify spending that amount of money on a game because, you know, I'm recording Skyrim pretty much every weekend because uh, weekends are normally the only time I have to, to play, to be honest, because in the weekend I'm just doing other things, I'm editing videos or, you know, just too knackered from work to, to actually want to pick up a joypad. Um, but to actually, you know, just say that the only game I'm going to play is Skyrim to get the most out of uh, the money that I'm paying each month, I, I just, honestly, right now, I can't really see it working for me. Maybe a couple of months, depending on how the game goes and, you know, how real life goes because you know there's quite a lot of stuff going on right now uh, I might get into it 
Uh, I mean, I probably will bring it to the channel at some point. That's guaranteed. Um, just not sure when. <laughs> Uh, there's also Destiny, which is just around the corner, and I must admit I am really, really, really looking forward to Destiny. Um, I think that's going to heavily be on my channel, um, just because it's a huge open world. So basically, it's a whole a huge open Halo world, I guess. Uh, so I can't wait to get my hands on that. And then obviously, um, I've got another couple of projects I'd like to bring to the channel. There's a couple of um, RPGs that I'm testing at the moment that I'm having quite a lot of fun with and I think you probably would have quite a lot of fun watching me play it as well uh, once I get to know the game because obviously as you know I don't do blind playthroughs I tend to you know, want to keep everything a bit more interesting a bit more informed um, so cool so yeah um, but for now we're just making our way towards my new lot of land um, so we can have a look at it see what it's like we're also going to be coming across the uh, Dawnstar Sanctuary, which will be coming to play quite soon as well. Um, there it is. Which means Dawnstar should be just around here. There's a known route just over there, I think. See it in the distance. Uh, and yeah, how the devil have you guys been? Because, <laughs> you know, uh, I do try to re um, respond to all the comments as well. So, you know, let me know what you think. Not just about the channel, but, you know, other stuff you'd maybe like me to play. Um, because I can't believe that, you know, this channel has just gone from, since I came back from Spain really, it's really taken off. And um, the amount of support I get on my videos is just amazing. And I'm really thankful for that. Um, I'm also trying to get, you know, I'm getting quite a lot of interaction as well going, finally, which is another thing that I always wanted on my channel I never thought I'd get to. Because uh, I must admit, I, I have thought a little bit about doing maybe uh, commentaries. <laughs> But the problem is, you know, the, uh, have, I take my hats off to, to guys who have commentary only channels. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, it's a cat. So yeah, it's got to be taken down. Hey, bud. How you doing? Hey, man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. That was good. That could have gone better. <laughs> Still. But yeah, hats off to commentary only channels because you know the amount of work it takes to not only do a commentary that's that's relevant, but also to find a decent enough gameplay to be in the background. I just I've tried and I you know I just I just don't have the time for it to be honest. Um, my gaming skills aren't that great at the best of times. Um, but to actually sit there and you know play through a couple of hours just to get um, that eight minute perfect footage to put a, a commentary on it it's just it's just amazing to watch to be honest um, so you know I have toyed with that idea um, I, just, I just don't think you guys want to hear me prattle on about things to be fair um, you know, I'll, I'll let the other guys do that because you know do a good job um, uh -oh, what's that? So we've got a Stormcloak camp over there. This is the one I want to unlock right now. It's the Imperial camp. Because uh, that's another storyline that I've got a bit parked at the moment. It's the whole uh, Civil War aspect of things. Uh, but we'll get into that soon as well because it's kind of fun. Especially when you start to attack famous places like Whiterun or Riften. It's kind of cool. For now though, is there a trader? Hello. Nice. <laughs> so he's getting the soldier to do the work for him. That's Legion's good. always looking for strong. Here's what I can spare. Let's have a look. How much gold you got? Excellent. Uh, I want to buy anything from you. Just help you out a little bit. I'll we'll take those. Right, what can I get rid of? Uh, no, I'm keeping that just for the heck. Take one of those. Name stuff I usually keep as well, like a Dudge and Okin. I'm going to keep those just for the heck. Uh, it's kind of funky as well. We got those from the LK Raiders we killed, so I'll keep that as well. Am I really going to need daggers? Oh. Excellent. Okay, so that's helped the weight out a little bit. Um, still not perfect. I'm still 400 and something. Um, yeah, every little helps. 
be getting close to Morthal now as well. That little house that's in the compass, that's where I'm heading, that's our new plot of land. There's no house there at the moment, but there will be at some point. I'll get round to it. <laughs> that's the other thing with Skyrim, there's just so much to do. Uh, that it's really hard to kind of get it all crammed into the episode, you know. People say to me quite a lot, oh why do you do this quest, or why don't you go to this castle, and it's nice, but you know, <laughs> there's just so much to try and fit in. Um, just try and make it fit together a little bit. Anyway, where are we at? This looks a bit more thorly. So. Now in this area, in this swamp area, um, we've got to look out for Churus raiders um, and also uh, giant frostbite spiders. The main concern. Sorry, Churus reapers, not raiders. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, for now. This is it, this is Winstead Manor. This is where we can build our little home. What's that boat? Is that the one we went to? <laughs> yeah, I think that's the one we went to for the solitude. Should we got uh, for the Argonian pirates? Yeah, the Ice Runner. Yeah, I remember that one. Uh, so yeah, this is our plot of land. And normally what happens is there'll be a kind of a little bench Chop him, chop wood there. That's nice. That's excellent. In this location, you already have some log cut, which is good because you need log beams to build things. Um, also, some clay deposit if you need some clay. Uh, there's usually also some quarry. Is that it? There you go. So you can quarry uh, stone if you need to. The good thing is it does tend to keep all the um, building material near to your plot so you don't have to go too far. Um, Volkreath for example you do have to run to Riverwood to get some some wood, some logs but here it seems to have given you 20 which is quite a good start. Uh, there's also a nice little chest to store as you can see it's given you some kind of material already which is quite nice. Uh, you also got a smithing anvil. That's what you usually need to do if you go down to uh, building materials, this is where you can basically make hinges, iron fittings, locks, nails, that kind of thing. Which you also need for your house. Uh, what have we got here? Beginner's Guide to Homesteading. A quick look through this. Yeah, it basically gives you instructions on how to how to build a new home. Uh, you can hire stewards as well to keep, keep your place uh, safe when you're not there. Uh, and this is basically it. You start off with a small house you have to build. There's not much option in that. Uh, and then once you've done that, you can start extending it. Um, uh, and then once you've got that, you can also add on, you know, west wings. Uh, you can add a greenhouse if you want, which is for ingredients, which is quite useful. Uh, there's an enchanter's tower you can add as well. So if you want to go into enchanting, that's quite a good uh, option. Obviously, storage room, where it just gives you a load of chests, to be honest. You can have a trophy room where you can hang all, you know, you get a load of mannequins so you can hang all your favourite pieces of armour or enchanted weapons that you've picked up on your travels uh, just for bragging rights more than anything else, you know, you can, you can add one of those if you want. Uh, Alchemy Lab obviously is quite a favourite of mine, uh, so you can mix your ingredients and make potions, which is quite cool. Uh, then there's an armoury, so obviously smithing, um, you can make your, your smithing gear. A kitchen, which is why you, um, when you're on your travels, you'll find a lot of flour. Uh, flour you can use to make bear cakes and other things. That's quite useful. Um, although, to be honest, in the game itself, the whole cooking element of it, I don't tend to get into too much because I'd rather use salt pile for uh, potions of slow, which are worth a heck of a lot. Uh, but you know, the options there if you want it. Um, there's also a library here, so books, uh, and that's pretty much it. So all you do, obviously, this is your carpenter's workbench, uh, and here is the drafting table. This is where you go first, um, and you know you, you've got pretty much one option at the moment. Okay, so once you've got that from your drafting table, okay, how does this work exactly? Right, uh, we just go to the carpenter's workbench, open it up. And obviously you've got your 
choices. So you need to make foundations, you need to make uh, the wall frame first of all. As you can see we've already got 20 logs but we need 10 nails to make the frame. And for the uh, foundation we need some uh, quarried stone and some more logs. Now, luckily we do have some stuff in here. So let's take all of that for now. And you can leave this in here, it's quite safe, it's not a problem. Um, so this is how it looks at the moment, as you can see. Uh, there's our little house, it's been in doubt. Um, so we'll go over here. And uh, we'll just make the foundation for now. Okay, and if we look around again, there's the foundation of our little house. Uh, we need some nails, right. So we'll go over to here now, <laughs> to the anvil. You can see it's given us most of the stuff we need anyway. Um, this is some. Is it we need nails? So make ten nails. We need ten nails for this. Go there. Okay, and now we need some more nails. As you can see, there's a framework. It's already going in. But we'll do the next bit, and then I'm going to leave it. Cause like I said, I'm not going to uh, do the hearth fire thing so far. Oops. Yeah, I need to make nails, wasn't it? Come on, there we go, nails, 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 where you at? Oh, it was nails, silly boy. Right. Okay, <laughs> let's go here again. Um, now we can create the walls, so we'll do that. Take a look, there you go, so we've got the walls are in now. Uh, let's just make the re the reframe. I'm not going to make the the floor though just yet. Yeah, what the heck? This quarried stone is quite heavy. <sighs> what a surprise! Right, we need some more nails. It looks like I'm going to just finish off this bit. <laughs> uh, there we go. Building material, nails. Okay. A bit annoying that you have to go from one to the other, but you know, whatever. So there's a little house for now. Uh, I'm not going to bother putting a door in it right now because there's nothing in here worth stealing anyway, so it's not a problem. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's uh, see if I'm carrying around anything heavy like quarried stone or clay, because for now I don't really want to be carrying that around with me. Store that in there. They're not too heavy, so I'm not too bothered about those. Okay, so that's pretty much Hearthfire. What you do is you just need to come up with the raw materials and then just, you know, keep skipping between this, this, and this, and watch as your house creates. For now, though, uh, I'm going to make it. Well, what are we doing for time? 23 minutes? It's been a bit of a rambly video. I'm really sorry about that. Um, I'm still trying to get back into the swings of Skyrim because, you know, it's a lot more laid back than uh, Gears of War. <laughs> so there's obviously the shack, the abandoned shack where we first started Dark Brotherhood questline. Go on, jump. There we go. So yeah, I'm going to just make it over to Solitude now um, and then we'll pick up the next video. Oh, hang on. See, oh no, not a dragon as well. Sound like, oh man. <laughs> Why is it always the same? Every time we want to finish an ed episode, a dragon turns up. Are you a fighty dragon or are you just a fly around the dragon? Optimistic, I think. Are you going to come and fight or what are you going to do? Alright, well that dragon's trying to work out what he wants to do. I'm going to call the episode and we'll pick it up um, here straight away on the next episode. Uh, for now though guys, I hope you have enjoyed it and sorry for being so rambly. Uh, but there was quite a lot I wanted to, to get into, it's just in my head. Um, and yeah, forgive me and I'll see you on the next episode for a dragon fire by the looks of it. For now though guys, as always, thanks for watching, take care and peace.